Hey everyone, so before we start the Sephiroth review, I'd like to address the elephant in the room and that is, well, what happened Thursday, right? Uh, I'm still kind of uh, disappointed in what happened, wasting 155,000 lapers in the process. I actually went ahead and even did the last step too, didn't get anything. But luckily, tickets uh, pulled through. I got another Sephiroth off of a ticket. I mean, it's still bad. I, I am at 50 out of 200 shards for him now. But uh, Sinsar and other friends of mine pointed out that as soon as the shard dungeon ran through its course, I will have guaranteed EX plus 3 Sephiroth. Which is okay, it's just going to take time. I have no idea when the shard dungeon is going to return, but it's probably going to be at at the very latest September, meaning I will miss out on EX plus 3 Sephiroth and Tifa by the way, for at least um, two Clash of Worlds and one Dark Visions, which, which feels kind of bad, but I'll just have to um, think outside the box and come up with different strategies of getting maximum score in Clash of Worlds or high scores in Dark Visions. We'll just have to find a way, right? And um, this should also answer the question that no, I, I will not quit. I'm Even though I took a day off yesterday, um, I really appreciate all the comments. I usually want to respond to as many comments as possible, but I just saw before doing this video that I was at 160 comments on my poll video and um, I really, really, really appreciate all the love you, you guys gave me. It. It showed that even though I had a super bad day and super bad week prior to this, um, you guys really cheered me up and I really appreciate that. I I feel like the whole FFBE community, when it happens to, to one of the content creators, that we really as a community stick together and cheer each other up uh, in bad times alike as in good times. So thank you all so, so much. and. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I will continue doing videos. I really should not give up on a super unlucky um, streak of polls and just keep going. I mean, eventually I will get what I wanted. It's just a matter of time. I am, if you guys knew me in real life, I'm a super impatient person. Um, and I hate waiting more than anything. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's it, 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 it comes with my job being in, in, in HR. It's You get impatient real quick with things like this. And when you know you can do better, especially. Uh, fun fact, I was in the 10th percentile of, of, if you take a Gaussian distribution, I was in the 10th, 10th percentile of this happening, by the way. And that was one of the other reasons I got so mad at the game that day, but yeah, uh, my disappointment subsided a little bit, especially after pulling one more copy of Sephiroth. Um, the greatest downside is that I cannot pull for Celes, unless we miraculously get like... I need 35,000 more for a 40k pity, by the way. So uh, I don't think I can pull for Celes, which really hurts hurts myself. I, I'm a huge Celes fan, I'd love to pull her. But I will continue using all my tickets that I get for a se on the Sephiroth banner, hoping to get one more Sephiroth along the way. That'd be great, but I will not have the resources to pull on Celis, which really feels bad for myself. Uh, but it, it is what it is. I'll have to, I'll have to deal with it. So yeah, but there won't be any pull videos, so to speak, from myself um, for a very long time now, probably. Uh, the next pull video is probably going to be Yuna, and I only need one for her STMR. I don't really care about the unit herself. I just want her STMR, so that's going to be at maximum a 60k pull video for her pity. So yeah, but that you should expect um, three months from now might be my next poll video. I will not obviously spend money on the game, especially not after what happened first day. The only things that I am going to buy are uh, fountains and the adventure crests. 
Those are the only things I am willing to spend money on because I think they are good value, but no bundles or anything. That was that was the last straw on really spending more money than is necessary for me, personally. Alright, so yeah, that's about this. Um, so thank you all again once more for all the love and support you've gave me yesterday and the day before yesterday. I really appreciate it and yeah, you made the decision for me pretty easy in that regard that I will keep going and just not let, let myself get dragged down this hell hole of uh, being super depressed over this. So thank you all very much. Now let's get to the review of legendary hero Sephiroth. Um, he is mostly a carbon copy of Tifa as you can see uh, and this makes the review a little bit shorter, right? Base form, shift form is pretty much the same as with Tifa, Dark Chainer, Flex Element Chainer, Tifa was Water and Flex Element, but Sephiroth is a LB finisher in both forms compared to Tifa who is a LB Chainer in Brave Shift, so he's a little bit easier to use. Abilities, much like Tifa, there isn't really much to talk about, right? He's got his Grandis, Dark M, 50%, 300 attack, 250 LB, fills LB gauge, he's got his Stardust training move, carbon copy of Tifa, it's just Dark Element. Um, he's a true double hand unit with 5x innate cap, it's down below here, uh, 100 chain modifier cap, you need Lightning's STMR or uh, the Clash of Wills Helm with the chain, incre chain cap increase. Please note, like I explained last week, Tifa's TMR does not work because Tifa's TMR is only a chain accelerator, meaning you get to the maximum chaining in the game faster, but it's not a passive in that regard. It's not a passive that increases the chain mastery. Well, the X plus 2 um, unlocks are 500 static attack and full LB gauge if you have your LB maxed out, that is, um, at the start of the battle. Alright, he's also good against uh, humans and reapers, as you can see, 100 human, 200 reaper killer, or as other people would say, 100% Aerith killer <laughs> and 200% reaper killer. And yeah, the base LB, the base LB, if you're using that one, it is super omega slow, so please keep that in mind, it's one of the slowest LB animations I've seen to date. It's cool looking, but yeah, it's also a carbon copy of Tifa's LB, as you can see. Katana uh, in peril 25% instead of fist, 80% defense break, 125 dark in peril instead of water in peril, 150 LB damage increase, and 200% dark physical damage, 200x instead of water. So, exactly the same. And this one, the only difference is this one hits all enemies, which is pretty sweet. Brave Shift. Elementless, uh, same as Tifa, no, no real changes, he's still a um, Aerif slash human and reaper killer, same thing as before, so really lazy design. And the limit burst is what is so special about him, just like with Tifa, 200 base axe, you, you do it once, you reach 350 max LB mod on the second use and he just claps things. And it also imperils Katanas by 25, which is cool. Alright. Trustmaster, Super Trustmaster, uh, his Trustmaster I feel like is bad, so to speak. It's 60% attack, true single wield with Katana, meaning you can wear this with a, with, a, with a shield or no shield, doesn't matter. It's A, tied to a Katana, and B, it's a weird number. You, you're definitely not using this on himself, because if you have him at X plus 3, for example, you are almost capped on LB damage, and you are using Master of Fate regardless, which is Cloud STMR. To reach that 400 attack, so a 400 true double hand attack, I should say. So it's not good for Sephiroth himself, it may be okay ish for um, other units. I just can't think of any other unit that would want this, honestly. Maybe for true dual wield units that need LB damage and can't wear a Master of Fate for some reason, I don't know. I still don't think there's, there's any unit that wants this. Uh, his STMR, on the other hand, are Cloths, 80 attack, 15 defense, 100% stop resistance, and 500 static attack for Sephiroth only. This is best in slot for whenever you don't need killers on your chest slot. It's generally best in slot for Sephiroth because it has that 500 static attack, which 
is also a little downside because you cannot wear, for example, Noctis or Arden STMR for the increased killers. I mean, Sephiroth has 300 Reaper killer regardless if he's at EX plus 3 because of his vision card, but it still kind of feels eh, to use this because you're losing out on killers potentially, but the general gist is that Sephiroth is super easy to give for 300 killers regardless. So it's not as much as a downside as it looks. And other units, if they don't need Noctuses, Ardens, uh, Ifrit Reigns, Shiva, Last Words, um, Cloth Piece, this is best in slot for them. So I got as many as I could. I got four of this. Just if I need it, I probably will never need more than two. But better have it and not need it than needing it and not having it. Pretty much the condom prin uh, principle, as you would like. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the vision card. Um, carbon copy of Tifa. The only difference is 100 Reaper kill instead of Beast killer. Still 125 attack, 50 LB, no conditions attached to it. And Final Fantasy VII, the only units gain also 500 attack. It's best in slot. I mean, there's nothing else to really talk about here it's just that good everyone wants to use this <laughs> literally every physical dps wants to use this all right uh, damage calculations same as always 90 percent de defense spirit break 400 percent attack magic spirit buff from Arif. in this case 300 lb buff Water, fire, light, um, dark, um, um, I added 125 dark imperil from Sephiroth. I don't think using Gilgamesh in, say, Clash of Worlds or uh, Dark Visions is going to be applicable, especially if we unlock the damage cap in Dark Visions to 100 billion. You definitely won't bring Gilgamesh. You want as many top dog DPS as possible, and you'd rather not use a dead unit slot just so that Sephiroth has 130 dark instead of 125. The, the gain in damage is not in, not high enough to uh, outweigh the loss in damage just because you bring Gilgamesh, who deals probably 20 million at max to the boss when you could bring someone who deals probably 4 to 5 billion damage. So I don't think using Gilgamesh as a uh, unit in your team is going to be worth it, especially not in Dark Visions. Other than that, I also added Katana and Perils, obviously. Alright, so this is the gear for Sephiroth. This is his best in slot on the left hand, at least, um, against the Demon Boss, if you're not using um, the Clash of Full Sam. So I also calculated that because we're getting the full, cap, uh, full Dark Vision Clash of Worlds helm next month. And on the right hand side, you can see the same build, same killer type uh, with the Clash of Wills. Um, don't mind the attack values, the attack values are wrong. He almost reaches 11,000 attack um, with the Clash of Wills. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty strong. This is the competition. You should be familiar with this from last week. And these are the magic builds. And this is the damage comparison. And. Um, some might be surprised that the difference between Sephiroth and Tifa is that small on average. It's only 400 million or 700 million with the Clash of Wilhelm. But this shouldn't be a surprise. They both have pretty much the, roughly about the same attack, the same modifiers. The only difference is that Sephiroth is using a true double hand weapon. And as you can see uh, at the max damage part of this sheet, the difference gets rather huge the closer you get to the max variance of his katana, right? So a maximum variance Clash of Wills Helm Sephiroth deals... Oh, let me quickly do the math on the calculator. 7k divided by 5338 is a 31%, 131% damage increase over Avalanche Tifa at maximum variance which you will very rarely hit but the the closer you get to this asymptotically the higher it, the difference becomes between Sephiroth and Tifa it is going to be a variance roll faster again but it's worth it and your score will increase significantly um, over time pretty much so yeah Sephiroth 
he claps. There is nothing really to add here. He is just that awesome in that regard. But if you don't have Sephiroth, you prefer Tifa, as you can see from this calculations, yeah, you're not gonna lose out on much on average, but at the best case scenario, you are actually a little bit left behind, but on average, you will do still very, very well with Avalanche Tifa on her own. All right. So how does he fare in the meta? I mean, he's the top tier damage dealer. He's, um, I made a mistake. He only has, he almost has nobody out damaging him. There are very few scenarios um, where Auron, who's coming with Final Fantasy X in three or four months, he may out damage him on very specific scenarios. There's one or two races that Auron is better than um, Sephiroth at. But Oren is a super limit burst unit, meaning he isn't as flexible um, in regards to gearing as a Sephiroth, for example. Sephiroth, just like Tifa, he doesn't really do anything for the team, has no active killer buffs, and he really banks on the fact that he destroys anything in a few LBs until his big single-use Grandus is gone. It's literally the same as with Tifa, as soon as her Grandus is gone, used up, the boss isn't dead by that point, um, he's, his damage drops significantly. It's, I mean, it's still okay, you could still bridge this with Tifa, uh, with Aerith, but you're losing out on that 50% Dark Amp, for example, which feels kind of bad. But usually, bosses are dead by that point anyway. There's no trial, no Dark Visions, no Clash boss that will survive uh, one or more um, Sephiroth LBs. So should you pull? I do want to preface this, uh, it's a PSA from what, I, what you've seen on my poll video. Premium banners are bad, yes they are omega bad, I feel like they are a total waste of lapers and money. Um, and yes, he's super expensive, like 150k is roughly the equivalent of 500 euros, I didn't even get EX plus 3 with that. And I melt, made a calculation yesterday, I would potentially have to spend 200 to 500 euros more to get to EX plus 3, which feels super bad. And it's super expensive, you can spend up to 1000 euros or US dollars to get Sephiroth, which is just, it's just not worth it. But the unit itself, if you are, aren't that lucky as I was, he is still worth it at EX plus 3 and if, at 2. And if you're getting to EX plus 3, he is, he is really relevant for 6 plus months. There is not a single unit on the horizon that will in any kind of form eclipse him. We're potentially gonna need nine star units for this. And uh, yeah, I mean, he is kind of worth the investment unless you have to spend as much as I did. It's that easy in that regard. So yeah, and that sums up Legendary Hero Sephiroth. Thank you all for watching. Again, thank you very much for all the love you and support you've gave, given me throughout the last two days. I read all the comments, I just can't um, answer or reply to all of them, just too much at this point. So yeah, we're not quitting, we're, we keep going, we're not gonna let, our, let ourselves get dragged down by this. And to one more year of FFBE videos from myself, I am having a, my anniversary sometime in the next couple of weeks I think, so... Yeah, one year of YouTube videos, I should say. I've been playing this game for three and a half years already. Uh, it's one year of YouTube anniversary for me. So yeah, thank you all for watching. We'll see each other probably today or tomorrow for a clapping video of Sephiroth. I had someone build me a EX plus 3 Sephiroth for Ashura trial. So that's what I'm looking personally forward to, to just clap Ashura in potentially three turns, full trial, three turns. That's what I'm aiming at. And we'll see how that goes. So, see you for that. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.